this was definitely coming down the pipe eventually. And here it is. Um, I don't know what our podcast is going to be named. We'll figure it out. And we really don't even know what we're going to talk about, truly. We'll figure it out. Probably uh, some more of the same shit. Maybe heavier on the politics and history and stuff. But anyways, uh, this is Gage. I'm the guy who always wears the hat. I'm Gavin. I'm the motherfucker with the long hair. The long hair, yeah. He's the one who uh, kidnapped me in the CIA video. Yeah, he still has not been released. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, why don't we just say a little bit about ourselves, I guess? Um, I am a Marxist-Leninist. I just call myself that. It's the best descriptor for where my politics lie. I, uh, I really like history... I don't know much about ancient history. I mostly know about uh, like 19th and 20th century history. Um, I also am really into fucking paranormal shit, which is probably a weird combination. I'm not sure I believe in any paranormal stuff, but I do like it and I like to get spooked all the time. And sometimes you get spooked doing that. We'll probably throw in some mystery episodes of this podcast, some history episodes... Some, like, just shooting the shit about the election that's coming up, podcast episodes, just a bunch of shit like that. Uh, do you want to say anything about you? Oh, good. I don't really describe myself, I don't think. <laughs> Pretty terrible at doing okay, that for okay. the most part. I'll, I'll interview you. You're gonna hear, alright, perfect. Okay, yeah, that's easier anyways. So, um, what are your politics? Uh, I guess you could call me a Marxist as well, but, uh, I don't really... You, you cut out the Lenin? No, I just don't really label myself, so I don't want to... What? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Gage is going to kill me. All right, yeah. fine, I'm a Maoist. How about that? Okay, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I don't think that I'm politically educated enough to really call myself a Marxist, a Leninist, or a Maoist, or anything along those lines, to be honest. You don't think so? No. Wow. No, maybe that's, I mean, I'll be honest, no. Okay, well, that's fair enough, I guess. Uh, or like, if I, I mean... No. Definitely not a fucking capitalist or, you know, lip part or anything like that. Leftist, though. Yes, you could call me a leftist. Not that, an anarchist, though. No. Thank God. I'm much more broadly just a leftist. <laughs> I mean, I, when I read more theory, I'll call myself, like, a Marxist or something. But I, I will feel fake if I call myself a Marxist without having read Marxist theory. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Um, leftist. Uh, when did you become a leftist? God, I don't know. Um, probably, like actually a leftist when I was like 18. I, don't, I always had some ideas that were more left-leaning because our dad kind of infused some of those with us, but also not really, but... He had the right energy. Yeah, he had the right energy. The fuck you to the United States government energy. Which, yeah. Which we like here. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely. But Gage, for the most part, uh, is responsible for my political awakening, I would say. Do you really think so? Yes. So if I wasn't your brother, you'd just be like a Trumpy? Probably not, because, like, the group of friends that I had and stuff. Like, I I probably would have been, like, a fucking liberal in high school, you know? If I'd, like, answered a questionnaire or something like that. But, um, you know. You know what I did? Huh? I bought, I think I've told you this before, I bought The Wealth of Nations from Adam Smith. And then I bought The Communist Manifesto. And I was going to read them both. Yeah. But I opened the Communist Manifesto and just never looked back. <laughs> awesome. Chad. The Wealth of Nations is so boring. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're both working class. We're brothers. Or, yeah, I'm his brother. So. Grew up in small town California. Small town California. Yeah. yeah. So, Single working dad. Kind of city, kind of rural. Don't really fit in a box. Yeah. I mean, the Not- population is small. But it's like city. But it's like a city because it's really overly congested from people that live technically in other cities, I guess you could say. Yeah, you could call it like suburban maybe, but that sounds way too middle class because it's poor as fuck here. Yeah. It looks more like downtown LA here than what you think of when you think of a suburban. Yeah, it's a... It's, so, it's uh, since, since I'm still interviewing you, I guess, uh, what is... Uh, what do you do? What do you spend a lot of your time doing? Uh, five days a week I work at Applebee's. Applebee's, let's go. A, as a fucking fry cook. And it's, it's honestly humiliating a lot of the time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it pays the bills. 
And I know I'll never get fired if I don't do anything ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I worked at Applebee's too. Same one. Same one. Uh, yeah, now I'm a union organizer, you could say. I don't, I don't really know what to say about it. It sounds cooler than it is. It's just uh, quite a bit of work. At least I don't... At least I'm not for, like, a for-profit company, which is pretty sick. Yeah. And I do get to talk to people about the uh, usefulness of working-class organization, which is also sick. It definitely helps you talk to people. You know, a lot of people, myself and you included, are naturally social, socially anxious, right? Yes, 100%. Yeah. And the more... I know it fucking sucks and it's horrible, but the more time you just have to talk to people, the better you get at it. I've done that through Applebee's when I worked as, like, a front of the house. Worked in the front of the house, you have to talk to people. And then now I have a job where I only talk to people. And I was probably the quietest person, like, in high school, growing to high school. I just didn't talk to anybody. But, uh, you know, nervous, anxious, depressed. But you kind of just... It takes practice. Yeah. Definitely. I've gotten better at it with time. But I... Yeah. Just being an adult, you get better at it. You just talk to people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at right now. Uh, still poor. Live in a slum, pretty much. Yeah. Horrible housing situation. The fucking handle to the oven literally just fell off last night. Um, our house is pretty much made out of cardboard. There's no insulation whatsoever. The walls are, like, so incredibly thin. Like, if someone was sitting in the other room right now, they would literally hear this entire conversation, and this is not very loud. Yeah. Um, we got roommates, and sometimes you hear them clapping cheeks, and you just look the other fucking way. Uh, it happens a lot, unfortunately. It does. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's disturbing. Yeah, not, not, not exactly <laughs> comforting, no. Yeah, you're like, is is someone being hurt right now? Hey, oh. like, what's that noise? Oh. You listen for half a second to, like, make sure everybody's okay, and you're like, fuck. That Speed is, walk that away. That is fucking cool. Yeah. Let me leave. Let me just get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Cough loud and walk fast. <laughs> Maybe knock on a wall or two if you're feeling like it. One time, I should just tell this story, just because we don't know where this podcast is going, it's a funny story. So we share, a, our bathroom shares a wall with... A roommate. And uh, I was taking a dump in the bathroom, sitting on the toilet, minding my own business. I all, of a start, I all of a sudden start hearing it, you know? Moans and all that shit. It was bad. So I try and hurry up my shit, obviously, so I could go to my room, which just has a wall, another wall between, so I wouldn't hear it, right? <laughs> the problem is, there's no toilet paper in there. Someone didn't fill up the toilet paper. Bigger problem is, uh, my girlfriend is sleeping, so I can't call and ask her for toilet paper. So I'm literally stuck in the bathroom with a doo-doo ass. Doo-doo ass, wet doo-doo ass, right? Wet doo-doo ass. Listening to, to humping. And, uh... Oh, awesome. Eventually I did get toilet paper and I left, but, uh... Yeah, that's the kind of that's the kind of predicament you might find yourself in when you're poor and have a bunch of roommates. Yes, a bunch of roommates that are young adults. That the fucking wolf could blow down. Yes, <laughs> this house is actually pretty worthless. <laughs> like I, the, the 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 other bathroom, like the, like parts of the floor just like caving in. Parts of the floor in I mean, parts of the floor in my room, you can like feel them go down like inward when you step on them. So. You know, it's pretty much a slumlord. It's 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 one of the most wealthy people in town. Owns a lot of fucking houses, and uh, and they're super parks. Christian. They're really Christian. Super Christian. And it totally helps, dude. They're like help the poor. We'll upgrade their house. You know, Jesus we'll, is the reason we'll for the season. We'll give them a reduction in rent. No, just kidding. You get like six hundred dollars extra every month to pay the rent. You uh, you don't get any improvements on your house. You know, but Jesus loves you. Yeah, God. We don't love you, but Jesus does. Yeah. <laughs> We do not forgive debt here. God might. I, I fucking don't. <laughs> yeah. So, uh... A lot of rage. Yeah. Um, but it's okay. We made it. We're not homeless. We're not homeless. We thought we were gonna be for a while. That was fun. Dodge that bullet. Yeah. This time. But yeah, for now. 
Um, there was actually supposed to be people working on our roof today. Today? And they never came. So, yeah, you know, I don't know what the fuck's going on with that. I wish that we got accurate information from our landlord when they were going to have people doing things, but we just don't. <laughs> which is pretty sick. Or they'll make sure to tell us, like, hey, you gotta keep your car out on the road for two weeks, which we can't do. Because if we did that, our our cars would be in pieces. Yeah, so our property sits on the back of, like, someone else's property. It's really strange. It's like a driveway that's long, and it leads to our house, and in the front, there's another house. T- completely just terrible house. A bunch of meth heads lived in it for years and left it, like, smeared and shit and stuff. Literally. And, like, I'm not exaggerating. But, since, but since it's a broken-down house... We get people who come and look for stuff to steal or to take, you know. Obviously, we got, like, drifters and stuff. And uh, they wander back into our property and see actually valuable stuff and then take that because why not? Yeah, that was pretty fun. They stole a uh, yard trimmer, like a standing yard trimmer, like what you would call a weed eater. And then, like, one of the ones that you push and drive like a lawnmower, but it's also a weed eater. So they stole, like, $700 worth of fucking lawn equipment in one go. And this is when we were being forced to weed eat all of the, like, surrounding area from our landlord. Yeah, because (laughs) they were pretty much threatening eviction (sighs) if we didn't do that. So that was pretty cool. Um, They are still pretty much threatening eviction if we don't get rid of cars, two of which are not in our name, and the rest of which run. So I don't... I want to kill her. Yeah. Like... Satire, but... Yeah, obviously, no, but, like, it's not, it's, it's, it's fucking, it's awful. It's awful. Um, but anyways, enough about us. That's, that's where we're at right now. (laughs) Um, uh, this podcast, so I'll probably do most of the research, let's be honest here. Yeah, yeah. And I'll bring on, uh, we'll probably go over some history things that I like. We'll probably go over some mysteries that I like. We might talk about that new alien thing on our slash aliens with the molecular biologist that came out, which is an interesting thought experiment to entertain. You know, things like that. Uh, obviously, we'll be laughing the whole time because we just naturally laugh together. So you'll probably have fun listening. I don't yeah. know. We, we we have a lot of stories together, so that'll be fun. We sure do. Let's we'll tell a story. Holy shit. Um, Tits porn. Get the most Tits hum- porn. The most let's fucking go. Out of the way. Let's fucking go. Okay. I always say let's fucking go, and then I always think about the meme that says let's fu- let's go is Allahu Akbar for white guys. <laughs> it kills me every time because it's true. Um, anyways, <laughs> let's fucking go. <laughs> Real. Anyways, uh, so uh, good. Something bite you? Dehydrated. Uh. <laughs> can sit there and it's a muscle cramp. <laughs> um, okay. Me and Gavin grew up together, obviously. Um, I am their brother. Um, chilling at home, okay? We have one computer in the house. So it's the home computer <laughs> that our dad would use. I'm just thinking it might be incredibly loud. If you hear just deep throat gulping noises, disregard. <laughs> Um, I'm just getting some water after my foot cramped. We're chilling at home. I think I got home from school. And uh, my da- our dad just goes, Gage, don't watch porn on my computer. <laughs> and I'm like sitting up like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm not dumb enough to do that, man. I got my own porn machines. I didn't say that. But, uh, you know, I was like, I, I didn't do it. And then. Uh, How old were you? Probably like 14. Really? 15. I was. I thought you were younger, dude. Well, how old were you? I don't. I don't know. I thought that you were in like eighth grade, dog. Was that 12? 13. 14? No, thirteen. Yeah. Thirteen is eighth grade. I thought that it was like that. Yeah. Okay. Thirteen then. So you were what? Ten. Yeah. Okay. So and then you know and and when our dad gets something like into his head, man, it, you cannot convince him otherwise. So I was just gonna be the porn guy on the on the computer. <laughs> It's just like, it was a fact. I could just say, no, no, it wasn't me, but he wouldn't believe me. Just, you know, don't do it again sort of thing. But 
Um, well, I'm thinking like, okay, Gavin, <laughs> who's, who's asleep in the recliner, okay, he's 10 years old. I'm actually laying on the couch. You're laying on the couch? Yeah. With a blanket on. With a blanket on, yeah. In basketball shorts. Let's go. Um, Gavin raises his hand. I swear, I feel like you raised your hand. I did. I'm pretty sure I literally did. I was very ashamed. I, just, <laughs> I, I did not want to admit it was me. Gavin raised <laughs> raises his hand and goes, I did it. <laughs> I, I did not want to admit that it was me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, thank God. Just, Everyone is just like, wait. <laughs> our dad wasn't even mad. It became just a running joke because what Gavin looked up was the word tits and then the word porn. And it's just fucking hilarious. So we just say tits porn now. Because Gavin, 10 years old, wants to see tits porn. Yep. So there's one funny story we got. Yeah. Uh, more humiliating one, but, you know. Are you sure you want to tell that? Oh, I don't care. What? It's, it's Who, just who's funny. Gonna, who's going to see this, huh? We're going to get famous. Everyone's going to see it. Oh, right, yeah. I don't know. What's something embarrassing you got? I don't know. There was that one time we were bouncing on the trampoline with your friend. <laughs> And, uh, apparently, because we used to put a sprinkler underneath the trampoline, because it was a hot summer, you'd bounce and just get sprinkled, it was a fucking blast. Very much so. And so we're all wearing, like, swim trunks or, uh, basketball shorts, bouncing on the trampoline, and, uh, all of a sudden I reach back and I realize the whole ass side of my shorts (laughs) were just eviscerated. (laughs) There was nothing hiding my white ass cheeks, and since we're just, like, we're in a sprinkler getting wet, like, there's no underwear... So it's just my ass is out. <laughs> and then I was like, what the fuck, my ass is out. And Gavin and his friend were like, you didn't know? <laughs> <laughs> you let me just do, like, handstands and fucking flips in front of you and just my ass out completely <laughs> without mentioning it. So it wasn't out completely, to be fair. He was wearing basketball shorts and it was like a little slit. Dude, so, like, I can see, see his ass sometimes, but I genuinely thought the motherfucker just knew. I was like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got his, he got his, he's got his shorts on. I don't know, man. I'm like 12. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. I'm just like, what the fuck, guys? <laughs> you didn't tell me? I'm like, I didn't care, man. <laughs> oh, shit. <sighs> Alright, so I guess we're just telling stories about us at this point because we didn't do any research for this episode and we just wanted to, like, get it out so that we actually have something to maybe continue with. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we'll just tell another story. Go ahead, yeah. So, our mom is kind of a stupid bitch, I'll be honest. Now, now uh, understand. We're not just immature, like, teenagers saying this. She's actually a horrible person, abandoned our family, tries to come back every once in a while and be friendly, sort of abandons again. That sort of thing. She's not a good person. We're not just like, oh, my mom's such a bitch. Well, she left our dad in, like, thousands of dollars of debt. Thousands of dollars in debt with three young children to raise on his own. Yeah. Yes. And but anyways, no just No so support you know. system for him at all. But yeah, that's besides the point. The story goes, uh, I had a boyfriend in, like, I was, like, 15, right? It was in high school anyway, so I, our mom worked at, like, a wait, as a waitress in a and as a waitress in a local restaurant that she would like to have us eat out at. The boyfriend was staying over at my house, so I asked uh, if if they could come too, you know? So I told them that over text. And can my boyfriend come? Yeah. Uh, not Maybe not exactly that, but I said that I had a boyfriend that was going to come. That's what I think I said. And um, she, like, calls me, like, frantically, like like, literally crying. <laughs> like, like in tears, like, is it a joke? Are you joking? Like, like, like it's just, you're just kidding, right? And, I'm, and like, I don't, I don't remember exactly how the conversation went. I'm pretty sure I just, like, hung up or something. But she literally called me in tears. <laughs> <laughs> Someone who has no room to judge, like, at all. No, and she didn't even fucking raise me. So, like, it's not like... If being gay was bad, that it was her fault. Because that bitch had nothing to do with my upbringing, except for the drama that she contributed. <laughs> Fair. Oh, man. 
I had a seventh grade science teacher that hated me. Who? Um. Just say the name. I'm thinking. Was it the old lady? Yes, Miss Marsh. Miss Marsh. She had a history of hating our family because when my sister was in seventh grade and took her class, she used to do an essay where in her seventh grade, I don't remember what what it was called exactly, but it was just like a basic science class. And, um... Life science, probably. I think so, yeah, life science. And Taylor, in seventh grade, my sister, um did a paper in her class that was because the prompt was whether or not you believed in creationism or evolution, you know, the thing that the science book teaches. <laughs> um, and Miss Marsh gave her like a D minus or some shit like that because my sister had written it on evolution and it was like a really well put together paper for a fucking seventh grader. So my dad like got into contact with the school and was like very fucking upset about it. And she got her grade fixed to, like, an A or whatever. And Miss Marsh was no longer allowed to teach that specific prompt in her classes. Because she... She tried to get someone... She tried to get the kids to believe in creation Yes. Herself? She was literally using her class to grade students unfairly when they argued against creationism. Sick. So, this is the bitch who I also had for my 7th grade science class. And... Every single day for roll call, she called me Gavin. Gavin? She refused to call me Gavin. I corrected her every single time. And she called me Gavin without fail. Every single time. It's not like she was dementia ridden. Like, she had an active mind. Like, she could still teach. Yeah. She was just singling me out and being mean to me. Like, I don't think that there's any real other explanation that you do that. Because it's not like she did that with other students. She really? just would call me Gavin every fucking day. And I failed her class because I fucking hated her guts and I didn't do any work in it. Because she literally would bully me. Who the fuck bullies a 7th grader, bro? Like, it, she didn't just not know my name, man. You don't just forget someone's name every single day for 180 goddamn days. Also, Gavin is not a name. Gavin is not a name. I mean, if it is, then then it's like for three different people, whereas Gavin is a historically used Germanic and... English name. <laughs> so, like, it's been around for centuries, dog. I'm not sure where you're getting this fucking Gavin shit from. Damn, dude. Yeah. So she literally had beef with, like, a family. And she took it out on the seventh grader. She didn't fuck with me. Although, to be fair, you look like more like Taylor than I do. She probably didn't put it together. Probably, yeah. Me and Taylor are both, like, very dark and very tall. Yeah. For our age group at the time. I mean, I was, like, the biggest fucking 7th grader in the class. Probably the biggest kid in the class as a 7th grader. I guess. Oh, we should talk about your height. So our dad was 6'9". That is when he, like, before he shrunk from being old and a worker. And, well, my dumb ass ended up being 6'9", too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm a very large individual, at least in terms of height. And people really like to talk to me about it in public spaces. People who do not know me, people who have no reason to speak to me, love to interrupt my day while I'm doing my errands and stuff to ask me if I play basketball and how tall I am. Yeah, this is a PSA. Like, look, even if you're tall, don't ask a taller person how tall they are. Look, I'm 6'4". I never have to deal with that. No one ever is like, well... Like I said before, if someone comments on my height, it's usually because they want to have sex with me. But Gavin, he, I'm not exaggerating. If I go to a store with him, every time someone stares at him and makes a comment. Every time. I'm the kind of tall where you walk into some place and people just stare at you. Yeah. And I already have, like, crippling social anxiety that I take medication for. I mean, not, not, not crippling, maybe, but, like, I have... A lot of social anxiety that I literally, I mean, I'm medicated and diagnosed with. So, like, walking into places and immediately being someone that people pay attention to is not nice. <laughs> like, <sighs> that sounds vain to say, but it's just, like, true. I walk into somewhere and people just, like, look at me and, like, kids are like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's, like, <clears throat> rather irritating. I don't know. I always, it's usually, well, not usually, but, like, a good 50% of the time it's someone really old. 
And I always just want to be like, how long until your heart stops beating, you old piece of shit, or something like that. But I don't. Yeah, uh, growing up, you know, we'd always go to the grocery store with our dad. And you hoped and prayed. <laughs> you hoped and prayed that nobody asked him how tall he was. I think I could count on one time how many times he was nice to someone when they asked. The man hated it, and he was... He was very intimidating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, like, you know, as a kid, I'm like... Jesus Christ, Dad, they're just they're just being nice. They just want to know. Yeah. But, you know, you grow more, and you you hang around Gavin, who gets it every day, and you start to understand. It's just too much. It's rude. It's it is rude, rude as fuck. Like, yeah. if you know someone that you're friends with, or let's say you, like, have a conversation with someone, and then you decide to bring it up, that's not as rude. No, that's fine. That's, like, fine. But, like, if you just see someone in the store, drop what you're doing, and go take their time to ask them stupid shit about their body that they can't fucking control or change. That is just factually rude and dumb. Also, like, it's fine to, you know, you know somebody, and then eventually, like, maybe after, like, an hour, just be like, you know, hey, how tall are you, by the way? Like, that's fine. It's different in a grocery store to go up to someone and say, I bet you play basketball. Yeah. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just fucking rude. It's like, it just... Like, because my dad grew up, like, I grew up with my dad hating height, his height. Like, desperately hating his height. It, I fucking hate it. I don't want to be like this. And then every time someone walks up to me and talks to me about it, it just reminds me that I'm, like, significantly larger than most other people. And it makes me upset that I have to remember that immediately when someone comes up and says that to me. And that's the first fucking thing they say to me. Yeah. It's not all glitz and glamour being that tall. I mean, like, I don't know, it's it's like a fucking first world problem kind of bullshit, but like, you know. It's, it's frustrating. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I would care nearly as much if my dad growing up hadn't been, like, so incredibly, like, upset about it all the time. <laughs> yeah. He, he fucking hated it. I mean, he was also a car guy. Yeah, he was also a car guy. Who can't go and, like, race cars ever. Yeah. Height, which is just inherently sad, but it's not like he had the opportunity to race or anything, but still. It also just limited the variety of cars he could drive in general. Like, yeah. most average cars are, like, a very tight fit for someone of my size to the point where you would not want to buy it and drive it. You have to try to find a car that's comfortable for you. Otherwise, it's going to, like, hurt if you have to drive your car every day. Yep. Uh, dude, one time dad fucking killed me, because there was, uh, that picture we took, uh, Inez to the range. Yeah. To try out his gun, and, uh, the picture, the angle from his view to Inez's view, Inez is four foot eleven. The angle of the picture <laughs> looked like a fucking drone. <laughs> and I saw it, and I started laughing, and he's like, what, we're both vertically challenged. <laughs> he's fucking dying. Yeah, we're really challenged. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, I don't know. Feels kind of goofy to, like, complain about it, but... No, it's, it's real. Man, I just hit my head all the fucking time at work, too. Any grocery stores and shit. Yeah. I don't know, when you're larger than the average door frame in your country, it's kind of annoying. <laughs> I think you're larger than the average door frame in every country, sadly. Maybe. Maybe not in, like... The fucking Netherlands, I don't know. Yeah. Probably still, though. I think their roofs are taller, though, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I never have a problem with roofs unless I'm in, like, a <laughs> <laughs> I've never had a problem with roofs. Yeah, that would really suck. <laughs> fucking hat man type beat. Oh, God. God, I think the worst I've ever hit my head is when I was in high school at my friend's house. He had, like, a nice-ass house with, like, two floors. We would always do dumb shit, and he was, like, big. So, he had, like, a screen door on the bottom floor, and it is not up to code, I'll tell you that right now, because the sliding glass door, maybe, like, overall, the door frame is six foot eight, but the fucking sliding glass door comes down by, like, four inches, and I, like, scalped myself on it really oh, hard. Oh, that's out. the worst. And, like, it was, like, usually when you hit your head, it's, like, a glancing blow. But it was, like, 
the height difference between me and the door was large enough such that I, like, caught it with, like, a lot of weight. It, like, <laughs> it, like fucking hurt. You know what I mean, though? Usually it's yeah. like a... Sh- it was yeah. like... Ugh! It, like, fucking scalped me. It did not feel great. Yeah, the scrapes, dude. Yeah, when it, like, drags your head backwards, you know? like Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, snaps your neck with it. Like, that's not fun. That's brutal. Anyway, enough about that. Enough about that, okay. Yeah. <laughs> No one without, like, almost no motherfuckers without the correct equipment are just going to drop a transmission out of a car. <laughs> like, I mean, I'm not saying that's, like, impossible to do, but that's got to put you in, like, the fucking sm- a very small bracket of individuals willing to work on cars. I suppose, yeah. Like, that's that's at least pretty hardcore. Like, come on, let's be honest. It was actually really fun. Yeah, that makes you hardcore, dog. You're like, yeah, I took the transmission out of the car that I drive to work, and it was fun. That's fucking terrifying, dude. I could not do that. If it were, like, a car that I drove and shit all the time, I'm not sure I could work on something like that. It would give me too much anxiety. Yeah, I think the trick is you just gotta be a little stupid. (laughs) (laughs) But you're not stupid because you do it. You put it back together. Like, what? I mean, come on. You think the average mechanic is a brain genius? (laughs) Brain genius? (laughs) Alright, maybe there is a little bit of stupid. (laughs) Yeah, dude, that's... That's my philosophy for most shit, is just, like, just fucking try it. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, man, but when it's your car, the worst that can happen is, uh, it doesn't ever work again, or it does work, and then you're driving on the highway, and it falls apart, and you die. Well, that could always happen. Yeah, but if you pay someone else to put it together, then it's a lot less likely to happen. Yeah, but then you don't know what they did wrong. True. Also, you have the kind of car that's really hard to get people to work on, right? Yeah. Also the kind of car that's better to work on yourself. Yeah. Definitely a simple car. Gage has a fucking awesome car. <laughs> At least if you're a nerd. It's an old Mercedes diesel. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It's like one of the most reliable engines on the planet. Yeah. Spits out a lot of cancer and smog, but hey. It's just part of the game, baby. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's probably less than if you bought a new car. The oh, emissions right. produced by manufacturing said car. Absolutely. Or like Cuba out here, baby. Yeah, for real. It's the only, what, like, net positive country in the world for carbon emissions or whatever. Net negative, maybe it is. Yeah, net negative. That's awesome. That's and they just drive 1950s gas guzzlers. <laughs> yeah. They just don't produce any toxic shit, probably. Just medicine, you know? You know the important stuff, like, uh, you know, vaccines for specific kinds of cancer. Yeah, kind of, yeah, the dumb shit, you know? Yeah, waste some money. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we need an iron dome across the whole country. Yeah, not like, uh, weapons. It's not important, like, weapons or, uh, you know, toxic plastics. Espionage. That's a, that's a big one. Uh, misinformation, propaganda. Uh, you Literally know. spending money just to keep people poor. That's the one. That's the one right there. We do need, uh, you know, to have fucking people to fill your roles. What are you gonna, are you gonna do without minimum wage workers, Gage? Huh? How fucked is it that they really reverse the fucking college? Uh, Student loan forgiveness. Hey man, what you think that you shouldn't have to pay off your fucking loan? You signed up. You knew what you were. T- you knew what you were getting yourself into when you were fucking eighteen. Mm-hmm. Signing up for a college loan, dude. It's so fucking horrible. All those people were like, "Holy shit, I'm actually not going to have to pay hundreds of dollars a month for another twenty years." Yep. And then just ye- nope. All the people responsible for that should not be in power. You hear a. Uh, Biden did it in, like, the worst way possible, where it was possible to be struck down. Uh, yeah, that makes but sense. you can actually get the, uh, treasurer of education or something. You know how when presidents come in, they appoint, like, a whole cabinet of people? Yes. There's someone just for education. And within that person's power is to forgive loans. Or forgive any sorts of, uh, Yeah. It might be specifically made for, like, single individuals, but you could expand that power. You could do it. I mean, if it's made for single individuals that just mail something in the mail to literally every American exactly. and yeah. make it happen. Like, the fact that it's literally something that a 
fucking member of the cabinet can do is ridiculous. It's literally just, dude, that's... The Democrats are so useless. They truly are. Because if they got stuff done, they couldn't point to the Republicans to say, like, they're gonna stop us from getting this done. Yeah, exactly. If they had actually uh, ratified Roe v. Wade, then then what the fuck would they run on? They couldn't have run on abortion if if they actually ratified it. Yeah. So they really, really need that talking point, guys. So they got to they gotta make sure that it actually can be at risk to the point where, you know, thousands of women are going to either die from childbirth or have rapists' babies that they have no control over. Or, better yet, they are going to have to acquire the money and resources necessary to travel somewhere where they can do it, and during that time the baby is going to grow to a point where it kind of does matter when you kill it, therefore completely defeating the fucking purpose of the bills in the first place. Did you hear (coughs) that, um... That's already happening. The Sacramento sheriff was sending license plate numbers to states that are anti-abortion, that have, um made abortions illegal. See, that kind of thing just makes me want to kill that sheriff. That's, yeah, that's such a piece of shit move, it's incredible. Like, he literally should be put up against a wall and shot in the head. I mean, I would never do anything like that, I'm just making it clear. But, that's the kind of person that I think should literally be murdered. That's the kind of person that Gavin Newsom will probably just, like, go after, just because it's such an easy target. Such an easy target. Literally a piece of human waste. Like, isn't California supposed to be, like, a sanctuary state for abortions or whatever? You know, they say all this shit. It's just not true, like... I know, but, like, optically, it would be nice to fix that problem, but... Sacramento, the state capital... Like, he should immediately no longer be a sheriff there. He is yeah. not doing his duty. He's not protecting people, which I know is not the actual purpose of cops, but they pretend it is. They sure do. They sure fucking do. Man. Yeah, so this is our first episode. We'll put out more. It'll be fun. We'll have specific topics next time. It'll be more regular... And uh, we'll uh, talk about some interesting shit, and I'll do research, and we can talk about it, laugh about it. It'll be fun. See you next time.